Hello there, and welcome to the November edition of Let's Talk Astronomy. In the programme this month, we'll be looking at rogue asteroids that pose a danger to the Earth. And we'll also be visiting an astronomy society. We're going along to Mansfield and Sutton Astronomical Society and their Sherwood Observatory to see what they're doing to promote astronomy. And we'll finish up by having a quick look at the November night sky. And the challenge this month is to find an owl made of stars. But first, those rogue asteroids. In early November, an asteroid made a near miss with the Earth. It passed within the orbit of the Moon. This asteroid was 400 metres across and travelling at 30,000 miles an hour. Imagine if it had happened to just pass a few hours earlier or later and actually impact with the Earth. It would have been a bad day for us. That impact could have wiped out a city. It could have devastated a country. I've got a couple of pieces of asteroid here. These are tiny pieces of meteorite, one made of stone, one made of iron. Just imagine a piece of stone or a piece of iron as big as a cruise ship, travelling at 30,000 miles an hour. Imagine the kind of devastation that could reach if it hit your city. To get some idea of an impact, here's Meteor Crater in Arizona. This is a hole a thousand meters wide and 300 meters deep. It was carved out by a blast from an asteroid a quarter of the size of the one that missed us in November. It really is a terrific place to visit and you really get an impression of the power of these rogue asteroids. Near-Earth asteroids obviously pose a danger to the Earth. To find out how much of a danger, astronomers are using projects to count their numbers. Here at Keep Peak in Arizona, behind me on the right, that observatory houses a telescope that is looking for incoming asteroids. At the moment, we don't know what to do when we find one. Nuclear weapons wouldn't divert such an asteroid. Space tugs don't exist. There are various ideas of getting rid, diverting these asteroids, but at the moment, they ain't going to work. So what we can do as astronomers is to map them. And that's what projects like Space Guard are doing. We found several thousand asteroids, which are near-Earth asteroids, and several hundred that could cross the Earth's orbit. There is obviously a danger there. But we're getting on top of it by plotting their positions. So if anybody says to you, what does astronomy do for me? You could say, well, one day it might save your life and the lives of many people on this planet. Rogue asteroids are being plotted all the time. Well now let's turn away from doom and catastrophe and we're going down to the observatory that belongs to Mansfield and Sutton Astronomical Society. Let's see what they're doing to promote astronomy in their area. So here we are at Mansfield and Sutton Astronomical Society and their Sherwood Observatory. In a moment we'll be talking to Phil Randall about how they use the observatory and a little bit about the society and I'm sure that any one of you who belong to an astronomical society will be very interested to see what they're doing compared with what your society is doing but I think you're going to be very very envious when you go inside and have a look inside that dome. So now we're inside the dome of uh, the Sherwood Observatory and I'm joined by Phil Randall who's treasurer of the Mansfield and Sutton Astronomical Society. So Phil, thanks very much for inviting us along. It's a pleasure. This is a great observatory. Uh, before we have a look round, perhaps you could tell us when the society was founded and how many members you've got now? Sure, um, it was founded in 1970. One of the, uh, the first members, having watched the moon landings in 69, put an advert in the local paper and uh, the society was formed after that. Yeah. Uh, February 1970 was the inaugural meeting yeah. um, and they discussed building their own observatory. So it took them a couple of years to find the land. Uh, 1972 they started building this place and it was officially opened in 1986. So we've got a lot of respect for the guys who built it. They did it in their own time with their own money and it's a fantastic achievement really. It is remarkable and uh, a developing concern too I guess. Yes yeah, sure. Um, we're always working on it in some way, shape or form, and it takes up quite a bit of our time even now. We've got 106 members at the moment, 
So uh, pl plenty of power there for <laughs> yes, <laughs> the absolutely. development in the yes, work. We, we drag so. them all in to help out when we can. <laughs> absolutely. Well, th this is a, quite a magnificent dome that we're in. And when I came up the stairs, I was just gobsmacked. Because I think this is the biggest telescope I've ever seen in, in, a, in an Astronomical Society observatory. Yeah, it's one of the biggest in amateur hands in the UK. Um, uh -huh. So that's, again, a lot of respect to the guys who put the place together because they built the telescope as well. It's not a, a standard telescope. So th this is a built telescope, not one ordered off the shelf anywhere? Correct, yeah, wow. correct. They put it in here themselves and built the dome around it. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, again, great achievement for them. So what size mirror have we got here? Well, a 24-inch, it's a 24-inch Newtonian reflector, the yeah. telescope. So there's a 24-inch mirror at the bottom there and obviously put the eyepieces right at the top, which is why you see the steps around to get up to the eyepieces. Sure. Now, this is not a conventional telescope. You said it was homemade. Uh, where did the bits come from? <laughs> the bits came from all over the place. There's a lot of recycled materials that they managed to get hold of for little or nothing. The, uh, the struts on the end of the telescope there were the scaffolding poles, and the scaffolding that they had to build the dome was, <laughs> was then reused to, to build part of the telescope. Um, the motor, there used to be a motor in the deck drive, the declination drive in, yeah. this, in this fork here. Uh, that blew on us a couple of years ago and it turns out, I found out at the time, that it used to be an old windscreen wiper motor from the <laughs> Ford Transit man. Um, it was second hand when they got it and it gave us you know, 25 years good service before it blew. So uh, that shows how it was put together. Yeah, really. Well, it's testament to the skill uh, of, the, of the people who did it. Now, you've got a really big dome here. Um, as well as members coming in, do, do you do any public outreach events? Yes, indeed. We're a registered charity, so we're open the doors to the public as often as we can during the winter to get uh, bring them extra funds in to keep it going, but to yeah. broadly spread the, uh, the science of astronomy out to the general public. So we have regular open evenings. Um, we've got one coming up this weekend actually and then one in December uh, and then into the new year. Um, we have uh, visiting groups come up, often yeah. schools or scout groups who come up to do their uh, stargazing badges but often we get adult groups yeah. um, who come up just because they've got an interest yeah, it's and we find perhaps sometimes even uh, one person's got an interest and the family will organise a birthday treat for them and, and book the place out for the night, which yeah. is great. Yeah. And we do a basic non-accredited sort of course. We call it a course, but it's people coming up and just giving our members, giving them a brief lecture on some aspects. So, so this is like a, a beginner's guide into yeah. astronomy, like yes, that, that that's sort right. of thing. That's yeah. right, yeah. I bet when they see things like Jupiter Saturn through this telescope, they're going to be blown away. Yes, yeah. And Jupiter's up at the moment, as yeah. you know. And, yeah. uh, yeah, people will be looking at it only last week and, and are amazed to see the bands and the moons. That's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. And you said there was something unusual about the dome itself in the way it moves. Yeah, the dome's automatic. When we set the telescope to track whatever we're looking at, there are sensors on the end of, uh, up on the top there. Yeah. Uh, and they pick up, as the telescope is tracking, they pick up the aperture and when it moves onto the dome, automatically sends the dome round a little bit. Otherwise, you'd be up and down the steps that we've got there. That's right. Every five well, I've been in Dodge where you had to push them round and That's the wheels right. stuck and stuff like that. They're all you know? automatic work from the, uh, the panel here. Yeah, That's yeah. That's right. Um, just how big is the dome? Because you can get a lot of people in here. Yes, it's 22 foot across. Yeah, so yeah. I think a fire egg say we can have about 16 people in here at any one time. So. That's terrific, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Well, as I say, this is one of the most impressive observatories belonging to an astronomical society I've ever seen. And I think Phil can confirm that because I think you said this is one of the biggest? Yeah, we were in the Sky at Night magazine only last August. They got in touch. Um, they put a few pictures in with regards to large amateur telescopes. Yeah. And the Royal Greenwich Observatory was the top one. And then uh, us, and I think there's one down south somewhere, both 24-inch or 61-centimetre mirrors. So we were the second largest in the country. Which one was number one? The Royal Greenwich Observatory. They don't count. Do no, they? I, that's no, what no. we said. Precisely what we said. <laughs> this is the number one. You've got it from the man. And that's what I'm saying too. Well, look, we've had a look at the dome. We've had a look at the telescope. I'm sure anybody who belongs to the society is slightly envious of this wonderful piece of equipment. We also have heard from Phil that they're using it not just for members, because let's face it, astronomical societies, their first responsibility is for members, and obviously members will use this wonderful facility, but 
The Society is also spreading the word of astronomy by getting groups of adults and children here to experience the cosmos from, the, from themselves in this quite magnificent surrounding. Thank you very much, Phil, for inviting us. Thank you. Good to meet you. Cheers. So thanks to Phil at Sherwood Observatory. Now we'll turn to the November night sky. Let's have a look what's up there to see. We're now looking south, and you can see the great square of Pegasus, four stars with few stars around them. But to the left of that square, you'll see the great planet Jupiter, a never-ending source of wonder. Now we put the lines in, and you can see the square of Pegasus. Jupiter is the bright starry object to the left. If you look through binoculars, you can spot the four great moons first discovered by Galileo. In this photograph, taken through a telescope, we can see the planet and the little dots at the side, all in a line, are three of the four moons. One had just disappeared by the, be, behind the moon when I took this photograph. And that's the source of pleasure, watching the moons orbit the planet. Increase the power and you can look at the planet and see the dark bands and light zones and even maybe the great red spot. After you've looked at Jupiter, you might like to try our challenge. Our challenge is to find an owl made of stars. To find the owl, first look upwards. High in the sky, almost overhead, is the W of Cassiopeia. It does make a distinctive W shape in the sky. To find the owl cluster, what we do is to find the central star of Cassiopeia and then look down to the left to the next star in the W. If you look below Cassiopeia again, making a sort of little triangle with those two stars is the cluster. You won't see it with your eye, but you will see it with a telescope. And here is a photograph I took a couple of nights ago. And there's the owl. Two bright stars for his eyes and below his body and his wings. Can you find the celestial owl? We hope you've enjoyed the show. And if you want to follow up your interest in astronomy, then you might look at Astronomy Now, the monthly magazine that keeps you up to date with astronomy news and what's up there in the sky. Our uh, thanks again to Mansfield and Sun Astronomical Society. Their contact details will follow. Enjoy our viewers' gallery, and in the meantime, I wish you clear skies.